Good afternoon. Welcome to the fifth in our series, Leadership Lessons in Troubled Times. This free online series is brought to you by the Schulich Executive Education Center, or SEEG. My name is Robert Lin, and I am moderator for today's session. Joining the, us this afternoon is Lisa Conway, Executive Vice President and General Counsel of Invest Hotels, the largest owner of hotels in Canada. Prior to joining Invest, Lisa was the CEO of Royal Bank of Scotland, RBS, and held executive positions at HSBC, the Toronto Stock Exchange, Citibank, and BlackRock. Lisa will be interviewed this afternoon by my colleague, Alan Middleton, SEEK's Executive Director. If you would like to ask questions during the session, uh, please feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of your screen, and we'll, we, we will ask as many questions as time permits. We are video recording this session for those who are unable to attend the live fireside chat. Now let's get started. I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Alan Middleton. Alan? Hi, everybody. It's a privilege today uh, to be talking to Lisa Conway because as you heard from her background, uh, she's got deep experience uh, in management at a number of areas and is now in the forefront of uh, a lot of what is happening. Uh, she's also, by the way, a, an MBA from that famous school down south. Um, so well, well experienced. Lisa, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Alan. Thank so you. Let, let's start with the, the, the current role, because, you know, through all of the COVID-19 look, you know, the number of industries have uh, been sent out of the doing badly, doing well, and how does the future look? And, you know, we always think about the um, hotel, tourism, recreation industry as one of the most important industries here in Canada, but one that's been affected. So can you talk a little bit about how you see things currently and how you see things coming up for the future? Uh, yes, the, the hotel industry, um, along with many other businesses, is facing challenges from this pandemic. Um, at INVEST, we receive loads of information on a daily basis from experts, um, all types of experts, but that information tends to change daily. Mm -hmm. So um, we've done a very good job at INVEST at what I would call uh, adapting within compressed timeframes uh, to be able to change our plans and suit our business needs. Um, so that's what we've been doing in the immediate term uh, for the business. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing it coming out? Obviously, it's, it's a troubled future, but, you know, people will want to go and stay places and move around, even if it's within their community or within Canada. So how are you, you seeing your planning for this? Well, well, that's it. We, we are anticipating more sort of staycations, if you will. Um, to give an example, there are lots of us that live in big cities, but we may have elderly parents in a small town, uh, relatives in a small city who we need to visit this summer, um, but we can't stay with them. So our comfort inns in many of these uh, smaller places and our holiday inns do give um, an adequate uh, place to, uh, to stay with great uh, safety procedures in place. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I should add, uh, Invest is the biggest in Canada. You've got, what, 82 properties, I think? That's right. Well, we have 81 properties. We okay. also are, uh, did uh, purchase um, and start, rather, a management company last year. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, are open for business to manage third-party hotels, which we do manage currently. So we manage most of our hotels, and we manage um, third-party as well. So 84 hotels in Noah. Excellent. So this puts you in the middle of one of the things where we always talk about frontline workers. We don't just mean uh, people in healthcare, though, obviously, that's the real front line, but grocery stores, but also your properties. So how, as we go through this process of different stages in different provinces, how are you working with your, your staff and how has that um, developed over the last uh, two or three months? Right. Well, well, right from the get go, our first um, priority is our um, our staff and, of course, our guests. And our number one concern is our safety. So we have, um, over the past two months, opened the lines of communication with our teams and not just a barrage of emails telling them what to do. But <laughs> yeah. we, we love we do have this closed loop feedback where we get their feedback. Um, and we really do want their feedback on, you know, two levels, one on their personal level, because everyone 
is facing constraints with this pandemic, financial constraints, freedom constraints. So we want them to be well on a personal level. Um, and we've tried really hard to be empathetic and accommodate our, all of our team. And uh, secondly, they are on the front line. So as you say, because we have different asset classes in different provinces and different scales of hotels, you know, we put in place plans which our team executes, but what better than to hear from the people on the front lines in yeah. order to be able to adapt our plans. Uh, so yes, so communication is, is very much uh, open. Mm -hmm. that, that's a occurring theme, I think, with all our, so far, our five business leaders we've talked to, which is the pyramids are getting flattened as hierarchies. You know, we've always talked about employees as being the most important asset in a lot of organizations. But these are the people dealing with the, the customers and guests right at the front line. So even more important these days. So can you talk a little more about that? You mentioned the connections, but how are you uh, developing the local management staff to, to work yeah, so with we, the, yeah, uh, the so, Right, line? so we have, we have 100 people at our local office, at our Toronto office, and uh, we host many town halls. In fact, I'm speaking at one tomorrow. Um, so, um, yeah, we do, we definitely want to keep, you know, all our team ha happy and healthy. We want to keep jobs. I mean, you know, their big concern is, am I keeping my job like everywhere? Um, so we've applied for the various wage subsidies and things like that, but yes, keeping up, um, you know, with our teams is, is, uh, very important. And again, we have, um, revenue, uh, people at the corporate office that are very important because in this time when certain business is, um, a bit short, we can have these revenue, um, our revenue and salespeople go out, rather our salespeople go out and secure uh, new, new types of business, so. Mm. One of the things we talked about coming up to uh, this session was the importance of community um, for all your hotels, because even in a big city, there, there's a community they serve, but especially in smaller towns. Um, so, you know, if, can we talk a little bit about is there opportunities of expanding your, your activities to engage communities on, on a greater basis while we get back to the people actually traveling around? Right. Well, you're very right, Alan. We are firmly ensconced um, in every community that we're in, especially in the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And um, Invest, uh, you know, wants to be a good corporate citizen. Um, you know, we've done numerous donations in these various communities. So when our buffets shut down and uh, some of the restaurants uh, um, that are in our hotels, we donated all the food to food banks. Mm -hmm. um, we are at the Royal York. Um, there's um, the rest program where we are housing the uh, frontline medical staff. Mm -hmm. um, we are giving discounts in these smaller communities to these medical workers. And, um, you know, unfortunately there are other, um, other people who are having things like hip replacements and who are suffering from cancer and they need a little respite. And we are, we are also having um, these people stay at our hotels as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other themes that's come up with uh, some of our other leaders is, and as, as a tip to Canada in this way, is that we seem to be communicating better across organizations and silos, whether it's government to business, or whether it's uh, different groups in the community to business. Um, and, and you always, uh, the hotel industry has always had a tradition of working in these areas. Can you talk about how you see this? Because I'll be blunt, some of our, our earlier speakers have made contrast with the US and said we've done a much better job at, at trying to work out things together. Is, is that been your experience too? Yes, definitely. I mean, all our partners, I mean, you know, our lenders, our suppliers, um, you know, we do, um, at the moment, we are securing government contracts. So we work with the government, we work with our uh, local associations. And yes, everyone is pulling in the same direction. And everyone wants to see a good outcome. And we've had a very favorable response from, mm -hmm. from all our uh, partners. Excellent. And our brands as well. I mean, our brands really do lead the way. Um, yeah. You know, with um, with uh, this this pandemic and, and providing guidance, and uh, yes, it's been excellent. Mm. How have you gone about working with your your management levels in these areas? Because you talked about the engagement of of head office and and the uh, uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. How are they coping? Because it's not just the frontline workers that feel the strain. 
you know, I, I figure the world's in two sections. Those who unfortunately are looking for jobs, but the rest of us working even harder, and particularly hotel management's a tough job anyway. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, everyone is, is uh, doing quite well. Um, I've, I'm very impressed by the fact that we are a hands-on service uh, business and, you know, we've adapted quite well to this new Zoom and new contactless uh, efforts uh, that are taking place. And uh, yes, I, I think that, um, you know, overall, I think it's been a very, very well-run well, well uh, mm -hmm. run, uh, transition. Yeah. Thinking back over the last couple of months, but then putting that into the future, um, what do you see as the, the big challenges? Obviously, big one is health, and the next one is getting back to work. But within that, how, how do you see staging it and, and, and developing this future? Right. Well, well, we did um, close um, a, a number of our hotels, which are all uh, due to reopen very soon, which is, okay. which is wonderful. A lot are open uh, because we did want to get it right. Um, you know, we did want to ensure that um, all our team had the proper, like you said, the safety concern, wearing the masks and, and all these sorts of things. Um, and we do want to do this staged re recovery uh, mm -hmm. so that we do get it right. So, um, you know, I, I think that um, in the long run um, and in the short run, we're doing a great job at just adapting and ensuring safety for all our, our guests. Yeah. Um how have you been communicating globally? I'm mean, not necessarily because you, a lot of your um, your brand uh, organizations that you work with are, are global, but also there must be learning from uh, different parts of the world. Has has that been helpful? Are there things we should be looking at in that area? Well, yes, we do. There are other markets that are, um, you know, far along in their recovery stage, and that's been very helpful to see, you know, have they had to pull back, um, you know, have there been incidents? And um, I mean, so far, we haven't seen anything, any major disruptions, but, you know, that that is, um, and, and we do have, a, a, you know, a global travel industry as well. Uh, that's a quiet for the moment, but we do expect that to resurrect. So we are keeping the pulse on what's happening abroad, for sure. Mm -hmm. How have you managed in this? Uh, you, you have a family, you have a teenage family. How, how are you coping with this? Because the pressure runs all the way up to the top as we sit and Zoom and uh, cope with the families as well. How's, how's that going? Yes, well, um, I think I'm managing well. I think I am busier than ever. Uh, which is a good thing. Um, I think the the uh, thing with working remote and with Zoom is you you constantly uh, you know have to be available. You feel like you have to be available. So there's you know it's quite busy. But uh, overall, no, it's quite it's quite good. The children are online. I have two boys and they're on online school. And now we're about to to hit with the summer. But I think overall, again, it's been a, a smooth transition because right from the beginning we had very good planning. Mm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to take you back and compare your past with your, your current experience because you had a fabulous career in the financial services industry, as Robert mentioned, Royal Bank of Scotland and a number before that. How would you contrast the pressures of the job that you're facing between what you had in the financial services sector and what you're now facing in the hospitality sector? Uh, well, the, the banking sen um, sector has its own challenges, yeah. um, and I've been through, uh, you know, a number of things in, in that area as well. Um, and my the difference, I think, for me, though, personally, is I was general counsel um, in a number of those roles, uh, primarily focused on, on the legal. Um, and that sort of evolved by the time I got to the Royal Bank of Scotland and, and uh, became the CEO there for a period of time. But in this role, I do manage a lot of different areas. So it's legal, um, but I manage, you know, all of HR, um, you know, uh, all the administration. So I think, I think my role has grown. And so I've seen a lot of different aspects of the business, including the operations, because hotels is really the real estate and then operations within mm -hmm. the business. So... Um, you know, different challenges than, than, than banking, but again, you know, once you learn certain skills, I think you can manage the, yeah. the content. We're going to go to uh, some uh, chats uh, in a second. I'm, I'm going to uh, pull up my, my chat box and see what we're getting on there. Um, but while I'm doing that, 
um, as you reflect on your learning from your previous career and your learning now, what things would you highlight for people to say, okay, um, this is an important skill on an ongoing basis, but you know, I, we should be paying more attention to this as we go forward for the future. Um, I think that, um, you know, you do have to have um, good planning again. I mean, we mm. don't have all the answers, certainly in this circumstance. Um, you know, this is beyond human control. Unlike when we had the 2008 crisis uh, with the mm. subprime mortgages, that was more human, you know, error and, and things. Um, so I think you still have to have a plan, even if you don't know all the answers. And that way, as the facts unfold, you can lead with your vision. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's very important, I would say. Okay. Um, okay. I'm uh, welcoming uh, people to come into our chat box. Um, even if you want to ask the question of when can I go to my hotel? Um, so please uh, call in um, anytime. Um, as we keep going, we think about the recovery phase, um, right. albeit with a um, uh, maybe a, a caution in what's going to happen in the fall. Um, any sense that you can tell us and, about timing on this? You know, are you, you thinking about next uh, another year's time or some sense of, of what you're looking for in terms of the pattern for the future? Right. Well, I, I do believe in, in the in the um, in the future. People will return to leisure leisure travel. Mm. Travel. Uh, people are resilient. They're adventurers. They're explorers. People love to travel. I think that will come back, and I do believe uh, business travel will come back as well. Um, uh, you know, in the past few years, we had the greatest hotel development in history. Um, so I, I don't. I'm not worried about the future. Um, um, what I am concerned about now is just ensuring that we get this right. Mm. Uh, I do believe that, um, you know, the guests' uh, views, the guests' experience, and the guests' perceptions when this is all over will very much dictate um, who survives in this, mm. in this period and, and who does well. So you really have to, um, you know, do things correctly and um, you know, provide the utmost safety and really be diligent and uh, accommodating and, and empathetic to the situation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of questions here. Tom Beckett um, asks, do you see the other side of the current environment there being more opportunities? Do you envisage a retrenchment to core assets and disposition of non-core assets, or do you view it as an opportunity for expansion? Uh, yes, well, uh, I do view it as an opportunity for expansion. Um, you know, there there will be some great opportunities out there, um, you know, maybe to, to form some strategic alliances, strategic partnerships. I mean, at the moment, um, you know, we are looking at everything um, you know, to consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, to build on that, um, and how about uh, associations, not uh, industry associations, but associations with other groups like transportation groups or, or wedding organizers or things like that as an opportunity for the future? Because as you said, so many of your properties are really important community centers. So the opportunity of engaging in some of those new areas might be there. Yes, and, and, and we still will um, continue even at the moment uh, very shortly to host things like weddings. I mean, you know, it, it's, I've, you've seen a few of these weddings that have been done uh, by Zoom and it's just the couple and, you know, that's fine. But, you know, it is such a special day. You really do want to celebrate it with friends and family. So I think that our hotels will, with the proper distancing, be able to accommodate such things, maybe not as large in, in the beginning, but accommodate and certainly host the family. So mm -hmm. I, I do see um, us continuing to, ha to host these, these events. Excellent. We have a question here from uh, Shabir. Um, how do you measure performance of your team? Uh, and do you have to be a hands-on leader? When he says hands-on, fully involved is what he means. And do you think the level of reporting from the team to you in your areas has to be direct or, or, or through different layers? It's about this sort of flattening of, of motivating of people at the front line. 
Right. Well, I, I do like to have people um, have control of their own job when they report to me. I don't like to, um, you know, I like people to have the autonomy to, to run their department and, and whatnot. But in terms of hands-on, I am very hands-on. Mm. Uh, we do host uh, weekly team meetings and I do this with various departments. Um, you know, I, I think it's important as well that they do want to see me involved and see what they're doing. And I think back to the metrics question, then it really does uh, help me to assess performance. Mm. Um, you know, so, so yeah, it's, but I do, um, you know, want people to have the autonomy to, to express their own vision and their own thoughts and, and diverse views are very important. Totally. I have a supply chain question here, interestingly. Um, did you have problems at the uh, the beginning or even now getting sufficient protective gear um, for your people, for PPEs, um, for your hotels? Right. Was that is an excellent question. Yeah. Um, for, yes. So fortunately... That's Todd, by the way. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so all of our um, staff at our hotels um, are... Uh, wearing masks and do have gloves and whatnot and uh, we've been fortunate because we do purchase in such bulk um, you know we and we do have a number of procurement team specialists that work for us at Invest that are in-house that we have been able to um, to procure the proper PPE but that is a uh, very true it's, it's yeah. yeah ongoing struggle for a lot of people yeah yeah um, I have a question here from uh, Alice uh, Fernandez, um, who said she worked in the hospitality sector in the US as VP of analytics and is now back in Canada. Uh, how much is invest involved in use of analytics through decision making? I think she's looking for a job, but that's okay. Yes, <laughs> yes we always need more analytics. Well, that, that's a very good question as well. We are, um, you know, we, we rely uh, heavily on our technology. We do have analysts that work for us um, in our asset management departments and, and, uh, and so on. So, yes, I mean, you know, the faster we can get our reporting, uh, the more succinct and more bespoke, um, you know, very, very important to us. Mm -hmm. I have an interesting question here from uh, uh, Andy, she. Um, could you give some tips on thriving in the boardroom? Oh. <laughs> so, you've been in a boardroom a number amount of your career, a Royal Bank of Scotland is an example, and now um, with Invest. Um, how does the boardroom decision-making work? And I'll use his uh, expression, how do you thrive in that environment? Right. Well, you, you do have to um, have a very good management team uh, because they are the ones that will, um, you know, execute the strategy. And you, you know, as the board, you want to, um, you know, give the, give the, uh, the runway, uh, the roadmap on the strategy, but you do have to have a strong team um, to be able to execute and, and deploy. So, I think, I think you do need to have that three-year plan. I think it's very important to have, you know, your board off sites and, and mm -hmm. really, um, you know, a plan for the future. Mm -hmm. um, yep, um, that's good. Okay, we're, we're, we're gradually moving towards the end. Uh, a question, and then I'm going to ask you for some sort of summary comments, sure. um, which is, if you had to put together three or four key things, You've talked about them, but we're summarizing sure. that help people through this. And you've talked about planning, you know, get ready for it as much as we can. I don't think any of us expected it to be quite this big um, as we're going through. Talk about motivation of the team and communication to the team. You talked about having a, a view on the future. What else would you, would you add to that? And I, I want to nudge you as you're thinking about it. In, in how do you create what's famously been called an agile organization? Because right. whatever we think might happen might go the other way quickly. So how do we how do we prepare to be able to pivot like that? And what right. other lessons would you say? Right. Well, well, I think I think first and foremost, as I mentioned, it's this this concept of adaptability um, and agility. And I think we've always had to have you know somewhat this this quality but i think it's very important in these times when as i say the facts are changing um you know there aren't answers to all the questions and you know uh, you know we're relying on experts but the, but things are changing so i'd say 
adaptation uh, ability, uh, agility, and as you say, communication, um, but it must be communication where you're receiving the feedback and you are listening and uh, to the best of your ability, trying to implement the, those suggestions. I think that's very important. Excellent. And uh, to reframe for Alice, and if Alice wants to send me the CV, I'll send it off to you. Um, add analytics in there as well. <laughs> that's right, and analytics, that's right. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Lisa. Thank Robert, you. we're gonna come back to you for some summary remarks and next steps, but uh, let me engage in saying uh, thank you very much. I, I cannot tell the audience how busy the hotel sector is. All sectors are busy at this stage, but this is one that's, that's on the front line and, and this is one of our, our proud Canadian organizations. So Lisa, thank you so much for the time. Robert, you, back to you. Okay. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's session. We look forward to seeing you at our next Fireside Chat. That's on May 28th with the University Health Network, Dr. Kevin Smith, President and CEO. Dr. Smith will discuss how COVID has impacted UHN's operations, their research, patient services, and also lessons learned from battling the pandemic. Thank you for attending fire, today's Fireside Chat and a special thank you to Alan and to Lisa. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Lisa. Take care of that family. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.